Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm glad that you joined me today. We're going to talk about something that everybody can utilize on a day-to-day basis working with your cattle, and that's doing a good physical exam and understanding clinical signs of cattle when they're doing well, when maybe they have a problem that we need to get them in and check them out a little bit better. Thanks for watching today's show. More after these messages. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'm the Jones Professor of Production Medicine and Epidemiology here at Kansas State University, where I'm a veterinarian and a PhD in, in nutrition. And today we're going to talk about looking at the animals in the pen, deciding when the animal has something that, that we need to approach the animal, bring it in to get a closer look, or do a thorough physical exam, and some things that you can do at your home, on your ranch, your farm, and, and things that I'll look for out in the pen. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go out to the pen, we're going to feed the cattle, or we're going to put out a supplement, and if cattle don't come up to eat, if we have a change in behavior, that's the first thing that's going to tip me off. Because the old adage is, is that Sick cattle don't eat, and cattle that don't eat get sick. The other thing that we'll look for is kind of the DART method, okay? And DART stand, the acronym DART, D is for depression, A for anorexia, R for respiration, and T for rectal temperature. Now, we aren't going to take the rectal temperature out in the pen unless you're a lot faster than me. And, and so we're going to look at the, the, the first three letters, depression. The first thing about a depressed animal is they'll stand off by themselves. Animals that are sick, they don't want to be part of the group, they'll go and they'll stand, they'll, they'll isolate themselves. And a depressed calf will be one that has its head down, its ears down. It'll have a dull, listless look in its eyes and it won't really pay a whole lot of attention to you until you get within its, its flight zone. The next part of that is anorexia, meaning the animal's not eating. And, and so what we want to look for is look at the sides of the animal. Back in the, in the paralumbar fossa or in that area between the ribs and the hip, that indentation where the rumen normally is, is, is a nice rounded side to the calf. But when a calf's off feed, they'll have an indention and they'll, they'll be slab sided or gant is the term that we utilize. And, and when we have cattle that are gant, it could be, they could be off feed because of pain to their hoof. It could be, it's, it's very, very sensitive in a calf that's starting to suffer from respiratory disease. And so it's a very sensitive measure of when the animal goes off feed. They'll go off feed three or four days before we'll see the depression. So anorexia, in my opinion, is, is very important in being able to uh, identify cattle that maybe aren't doing so well. And then respiration rate. We'll talk more about respiration rate as cattle generally take 20 to 30 breaths uh, in a minute. And we'll talk more about cattle respiration rate, how, the resp how they respire, whether it's shallow breathing, deep breaths, and how those can be different on different types of clinical syndromes going on within the bovine. The last thing I'll look at in the pen is I will read the feces. Now, when cattle are stacking feces, they might be dehydrated. And so they, the feces will stack up when the calf defecates. If the animal has diarrhea, which in neonates, we're thinking about neonatal calf diarrhea, or in a feeder steer, we're thinking about acidosis or, or some sort of uh, metabolic 
issue going on to cause that, that diarrhea, we'll look out in the home pen and if we see a lot of diarrhea on the home pen or if the cattle are painting their butts. When a calf has diarrhea, the diarrhea, the feces will get on the tail, they swish their tail, it'll look like a windshield wiper type pattern on their, on their butts. Those are just some of the things. When we come back, we're gonna discuss lameness in the home pen and then we'll take that animal to shoot and talk about doing a physical exam. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Lee Michaels is a student at the University of Minnesota College of Veterinary Medicine. He recently received the Merck Animal Health Student Recognition Award. Raised on a dairy in Wisconsin, Lee developed a passion for dairy production, and at school he spent much of his time working with the Production Animal Medicine Club. Upon graduation, he hopes to practice in a rural Midwest community. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Calves require adequate, high-quality colostrum immediately following birth to receive the immune and nutritional support needed to fight diseases and thrive. Next Generation Colostrix Colostrum Replacer and Supplement are USDA licensed to aid in the treatment of failure of passive transfer and contain natural maternal bovine colostrum antibodies against E. coli K99. Ask your animal health supplier for Colostrix or visit agrilabs.com for details. Colostrix makes all systems go. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University where I serve as the Jones Professor of Production Medicine and I'm in, located in the Department of Diagnostic Medicine and Pathobiology. And I spend a lot of time working with farmers and ranchers on, and veterinarians on how to identify cattle that are sick or lame. And when we talk about lameness, a lot of times we, we don't pick up on the subtleties of lameness soon enough. The sooner we can identify a calf becoming lame, we can get them in, we can, we can apply the treatments. Generally, if we get it done sooner, it'll be a lot better outcome, treatment and case outcome, than if we put it off or we don't diagnose it until the animal's non-weight bearing. So, Zenpro has come up with a scoring system. And in Zenpro's scoring system for lameness, it's a zero through three. And a zero is an animal that's normal. So the animal is walking, they have a long stride, their stride, the, the back foot basically lands where the front foot is leaving. So when you look at the normal stride of a, of a bovine, that stride length or that back foot will almost replace where the front foot was as the animal walks forward. The first subtle sign of lameness in, in a calf is short strided. So the calf won't reach as far with the, the back limb or they're taking shorter strides and so it's more of a choppy and that foot is not replacing where the front foot was. So that will be our first sign and that would be a lameness score of one. When we move to a lameness score of two, which is more severe than a one, then the animal is not only short strided or having a shorter stride, as you can see from this video clip, but the animal also has the, the head bob. Now, in a horse that's lame on, the front, on a front limb, 
what we'll say is the head goes down with the sound. And same with cattle. So if the calf is walking forward and they have a head bob, when their head goes down, their head is actually going down when they land on the sound foot. So when their head is up during the head bob, that is when the, they're landing on the, the limb that's lame. So you can kind of match that up and narrow it down as to which limb you're going to look at. As we move from a, from a severity score two to severity score three, it's, it's pretty, three being the most severe, these animals are either recumbent and down, or if they're up, they're non-weight bearing at all on that limb. So, so a zero is normal, a one is short strided, a two is, is short strided with the head bob, and again, the animal's head goes down with the sound limb on the on front limb lameness, and then a three is non-weight bearing. The sooner we bring those cattle to the chute, the better. So when you bring an animal out of a pen, and now we're gonna go from the pen to the, to the hospital area or from the pen to the chute, you wanna be looking at how that animal's moving. You wanna be looking at the pen conditions as you come out. You wanna be looking at, at the potential for diarrhea, and we're gonna look at the, the gantness of the animal. And all of those are going into your Rolodex as you're bringing that animal to the chute to get a more thorough diagnostic review of that animal through a physical exam. While we take the commercial break, we'll move old Bossy into the chute so that we can do a thorough physical exam. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. I'm Dr. Kip Likasevich with Production Animal Consultation. Today's BQA Tip of the Day is proper alignment with the trailer and the chute. It's really important that when cattle arrive at a feedlot or when the cattle are being loaded out for shipping, that trucks, when they come in uh, to back up to the loading facilities, is that when they come in, they're square with the alley in which they come in. Sometimes we have trucks where they're six inches off or 12 inches off, and what that creates is it creates an option to bruise cattle and uh, uh, shoulder bruises, flank bruises, uh, any of those types of things. The other uh, uh, injury that can occur in that instance is, is if we get a leg that falls off or if there's too much space between the loading dock and the truck where a foot can slip through and we can fracture a leg. So the, the most important tip is make sure that we're square, make sure that we're flush when we come back and that everything is in line for cattle to properly load into the truck and that's your tip of the day. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Beef producers asked for it, and the wait is over. Enroflox 100 Enrofloxacin from Norbrook, now approved for single-dose treatment and control of bovine respiratory disease. With the same active ingredient and dosing regimen as Batril 100 in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Choose Enroflox 100 when looking for an injectable antimicrobial solution to treat and control BRD. Observe label directions and withdrawal times. See product labeling for full product information, including warnings and precautions. Consult your veterinarian to see if Enroflox 100 is right for your cattle. 
Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey folks, this is Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. We have moved Bossy into the chute. So now we're going to do the, the physical exam. And the big thing about a physical exam, you want to start out, you want to make sure that you all have the ability to restrain the animal. If you're going to work with the head, use a halter. If you're going to do something with the side of the cow, make sure you have a squeeze chute or a stanchion or a way to, to put that animal in a place where it's not going to hurt you or kick you or, or uh, hurt somebody that's working on your farm or, or ranch. And, and if you're going to work with the legs, you're going to make sure you have ropes, okay? And so we're going to make sure that we have ropes out there. And we'll talk a little bit about how we can maneuver the animal within a squeeze chute so that we can examine the head, so we can examine the rumen, so we can examine the legs, and different things that we're going to do during the physical exam. But the first thing we're going to do in the physical exam is we're going to take a rectal temperature. Now, the rectal, normal rectal temperature of an adult cow is 100.5 to 102.5. And then for a baby calf, we increase that one degree. So the normal, for a, for a baby calf or a feeder steer, normal rectal temp is 101.5 to 103.5. Anything above the normal range is indicative of disease process or running a fever. One thing to be cautious of, though, is that when you're taking a rectal temperature in the summer or times when we have high uh, environmental temperatures, the animal, if they aren't dissipating heat and they're accumulating heat load, they can actually have a slight increase in rectal temp, which would be normal. But when we get in that 105, 106, 107, we definitely have a, some sort of infection, whether it's a virus or a bacteria, that's going on in this animal, some undifferentiated fever or cause of fever, and we need to, which warrants a, a greater physical exam of that animal. Now, when you take rectal temperature, one thing you want to make sure of is that you have a calibrated or, uh, thermometer, and make sure your thermometer is working properly. The other one is, is that you'd be amazed that when we don't lift the tail to insert the thermometer, if you're having to just try to angle that thermometer into the rectum, you can actually perforate the rectum with your thermometer, and we've seen that in some cases. So make sure that you lift the tail if you want to use lube on the thermometer, um, but make sure you lift the tail and that you do a proper insertion of that thermometer. Make sure you have the thermometer against the, the rectum wall so that you get an accurate reading. Uh, and not in the, the lumen, but, but 101.5 to 103.5 for our feeder steers, for a cow that you bring in out of the pasture, 100.5 to, to 102.5. If I'm going up, moving up to the head, the one thing I might look at is first I want to determine how old this cow is. And, and if you don't know how to age a cow, we can do so based on the incisors. And once the first two incisors, the calves are born with baby teeth. And the baby teeth fall out at different ages along the cow's life. And at 18 to 24 months is when you'll have the first two incisors of permanent teeth. For 24 to 30 months, you'll have two sets of incisors. At three years of age or 36 months, you'll have three sets of incisors. And then 42 to 48 months or a four-year-old cow will have four sets of incisors. And that's how you can start to score them. But one of the most important things, if you have a cow that's skinny that you're bringing in, Look in her mouth to make sure she has teeth. Smooth-mouthed cows have trouble grazing and might not be able to keep up. We're going to take another break, and when we come back, we'll continue on our physical exam and walk you through. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. I'm Dr. Kiplikasevich with Production Animal Consultation. Today's BQA tip of the day is bud box facilities. We're at a feed yard today that has a bud box. Uh, more, it's becoming more and more popular. The advantage of the bud box is that it's a, it's a facility that has open sides. Uh, has one solid side, which is the gate, uh, which they come in through. But it takes advantage of cattle's natural behavior in that cattle like to see what's pressuring them and they like to return where they came from. 
And so the way our alley is set up is so that it, the cattle come into the box first and they make a turn and they come back around and then they go right down into the, the, the double feed uh, alley uh, and they go straight, which cattle prefer. The advantage of the bud box is that if we have one that is giving us problems going into the alley and sometimes that happens, we have a gate here that we can swing and bring around to narrow that up and have him go in. And if we have one that uh, is, is kind of ornery and uh, doesn't want to cooperate with us that way, we can at least easily come through here and come through the gate and work from the outside. And if we need to, uh, we, can have, we can have a flag or something that we can utilize uh, to uh, work from the outside and have the cattle come in as well. Both ways work really well. Um, and that's how you stay safe working in a bud box. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. All right, folks. Let's continue on our physical exam, and we're going to look at the eyes. And the eyes can tell a story. If they're dull and listless, that means an animal could be depressed. If the eyes are sunken in, that's pretty indicative of, of dehydration. If the eyes are bulging in an older cow, it could mean that we have bovine leukosis virus and we have some sort of lymphoma or something going on in that cow that we need to make sure that we're, we're getting her taken care of. Also on the dehydration front, to determine dehydration, we'll first look and see if the eyes are sunken. The other one is a skin tint. And if I pull that loose area of the skin and it doesn't go back right away in the normal place, that means that animal is dehydrated. So it'll stay in that tinted form longer than, than normal. Okay, I'll also look at the nose. If the nose has got feed on it, I probably pulled a calf that looked ugly and not one that was sick. Feed on the nose is a good thing. But if the nose is dried, cracked, red, generally means that animal has something going on in a disease process, running a fever or such. Other things that I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at, at normal heartbeats. A lot of times people don't even know. The normal number of heartbeats are 40 to 70 beats per minute in a cow. Number Respiration rate, normal respiration rate in a cow is 10 to 30 breaths per minute. And the last thing I want to look at is a normal functioning rumen. The, the cow or steer should have one to two rumen contractions per minute. If they aren't, there's a high potential of bloat. There could be something going on that's causing rumen stasis and decrease in digestion within that rumen. When you want to take the heart rate or you want to take the respiration rate or measure rumen motility, you can use a stethoscope. A cheap stethoscope is worth a lot when it comes to a physical exam. Place the stethoscope on the, the cardiac region to listen to heartbeats. You can actually listen to the lungs, inspire air and, and, and move air and count the number of breaths. 
But using that stethoscope back in that paralumbar fossa, in that area between the hips and the ribs, you'll actually hear a roar or a roll of the rumen contractions. If you don't have a stethoscope, you can take the pulse of a cow underneath the jaw, or you can watch respiration rates, or you can manually physically put your fist in that paralumbar fossa area and feel the rumen contractions as they move over your fist. Many different tricks to physical exams. I really appreciate y'all watching Doc Talk. Be sure you work with your local veterinarian, and if you want to know more about what we do at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Thanks for watching today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.